you want to share the like the dynamics of living a spirit-filled life, uh, God has not called us to live a religious life. A lot of times when people get born again and things like that, they, they sort of take on this religious concept. And we've all seen it through churches because we, we all of a sudden have learned the language of religion. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory to God, amen. And all, the, all these words that, that are very, very relevant, very, very powerful, but sometimes they're just words that we speak because it's, it's the words of religion. I believe that there's... The word of God is powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, and I, and I believe that, that it will divide and separate and smash the words of the enemy. But God doesn't uh, ask us, we're not called to live, to live a religious life. Uh, I believe that God has called us to live a supernatural life. Uh, a life of the Spirit, a supernatural, where we see amazing things happen, where we, where, where we actually see a demonstration of the power of God. I spoke a little bit before about that God wants us to demonstrate His power. He wants the church to rise up and demonstrate. And that's what Jesus did when He came on this planet. And we find that the religious people of the day, they marvel and they, they question this man that came from Galilee. The way that He moved, the authority that He had, the power that He had, the actual knowledge that He had as, a, as, as what they thought as an unlearned man. That he, he had all this experience. And then, then he stood up and he started to demonstrate the power of God by casting out demons and healing all kinds of diseases and, and doing amazing works and miracles. And when the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders were arguing amongst themselves about who is this man, who is this guy that claims to be the Christ? Who is he? And many times the thing there that they that they that was a challenge to them was this, it was they said. This man is one who speaks of, with authority, not like the scribes and, and the Pharisees. This one here does miracles. This one here casts out demons. And then they tried to pull him down by saying that the demons that he cast out, he did by the elves of old, and they did all this sort of thing. Then can I say this? When you start to move in the spirit, you're gonna get persecution. You're going to get those that are going to rise up against you. You're going to get those that are going to try to pull you down. You're going to get those that are going to try to, to say all wrong things about what you're doing. So let's not get put aside by what the enemy is trying to do, but let's get our eyes on what God's going to do. Amen? I, 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 you don't have to become religious or a fanatic to please God. So we find today that in the church, a lot of people try to become fanatics. We've all seen the fanatics, they talk the, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. They say a lot of things that seem powerful. But I'm going to tell you what I believe, that one of the number one things that God wants you and I to be, number one, is normal. He wants us to be real. And he wants us to also know the power and the authority that can flow through you as a normal, real, born-again, spirit-filled Christian. Amen? I believe that's what God's looking for. And I believe that's what's going to get the devil mad. Amen. How many people want to get the devil mad? Yeah. Basic truths that we know, that we know them so well, is Acts 1.8. It says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I want to just lay some foundations. I know that we all know this. I know I'm preaching to the choir. I know that, that you've been filled with the Spirit now, and I know that you know these scriptures much really better than I do. But I want to remind you of some things. It says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me. It also says, you shall be my witness. You're going to be my witness. God wants the church to be his witness. He wants to be able to demonstrate who he is through us. He wants to show the world who he is. And you shall receive power. Power comes from the Greek, Greek word dunamis. How many people already knew that? Of course you did. Dynamite comes from the same word as dunamis. You already knew that as well. But you should, what I want you to understand is you shall receive explosive of power. Power to lay hands on the sick and blast sickness out of bodies. See, see, it's, 
It's a way you start to apply and look at what God's really trying to say. You shall receive generous power, dynamite power, and you can lay hands on the sick and blast sickness out of people's body. The thing is, is you don't have to shout it, you don't have to spit it, you don't have to do anything, but what you do have to do is you have to believe it. And I believe that this is a concept where God is bringing us back to, to our faith. And God is wanting to take away the wrong thinking and the wrong concepts that have been sown into our lives. You know that many, many ministers today have been taught most of their life through Bible school that healings and deliverances cease with the disciples. Can you imagine that? If, you're, if that's how you think, and, and there's somebody that's sick around you, you would not even think of praying for them. Because the concepts, and a lot of us have come through some of those wrong concepts. And whether you understand it or not, it lays in the back of our minds when we're wanting to move in faith, sometimes that stuff starts to speak to us and say it's different things. We've got to eliminate that, we've got to get rid of that junk, and we've got to come to a simple faith in Jesus Christ. That whatever Jesus said he can do, he can do. And whatever he says I can do, I can do. And whatever God wants me to do, I will be able to do it. Amen? And there's no weapon formed against me who will prosper. So, and I believe that, that these words, dunamis and dynamite and different things like that, there's also, from that word comes the word dynamo. I don't know about you, when you were young, I don't think you had one of those dynamos that you put on the front wheel of your push bike. The faster you went, the brighter the light. You must get when you stop, then stop. But the thing is that the dynamo that was in that thing kept on going and kept on producing. And what you've been filled with is the dy dynamo power that wants to continue to run in your life and continue to create power, continue. It's not a, an on-off switch. There's a dynamo in there that wants us to continually flow and in the realm of the spirit and the supernatural power of God. And live in that spirit, live in that realm. You jump in your car and you go to put up, you know, you start to put it in the gear and you start to drive away. And all of a sudden you can sense that anointing, that power, whatever it is, beginning to rise within you and, and, and you, just, you just have a surge. Amen. Dynamo comes from that same word, dunamis. You shall receive explosive power. I love that. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. This is what the Bible says. What power? What's he talking about? You shall receive power. I'm trying to explain it a little bit. It isn't man's power. The power you get when you go to the gym. You can have a body like this too if you neglect it. <laughs> it isn't the power you get when you uh, get a black belt or when you go and do karate or whatever it might be. No, it's not that. But it says, you shall receive God's power. If you just start to use these words a little bit differently and start to understand, I just didn't get religious power. I just didn't get Pentecost power or AOG power or COC power or some other power. I got God's power. And you see, if, if all I got was COC power or AOG power or DOG power or some other power, I will be limited to where they go or where they're at. But when I understand I got Holy Ghost power, I got God's power, but that means that I can do whatever God does and there's no limits on what is available for you and me. You see, they say the sin of verse in the Bible is that they limited the God of Israel. See, if you limit God, you will uh, take away the power that is in the Word of God. You'll take away the dynamics, you'll take away and we just become another bunch of Christians. You shall receive God's power. God's power. Let me, let me just say this. All the power God possesses has been deposited in you. I never ever thought I'd see the day when you were coming and sitting in the front seat. God bless you. God bless you. 
dynamic power, amazing power. Let me just say that it's been deposited. This power has been deposited in you. See, if, if you're used to just getting by, well, that's how you live. But if you're just living, getting by, before I was saved, that's how I live. But then I got born again, and something was opened, the, the, the possibility, but I still live, and my thinking was still down in this way. And God wants to release me to take me into that. And see, if, if you're just living, you know, like that, and all of a sudden somebody deposits about two to three million dollars in your account, all of a sudden you 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 got something there that you can draw from. You stop living that way. You stop living in poverty. Would, would, would anybody here would stop living in poverty if, if you know all your problem was was nothing, and all of a sudden through some supernatural inheritance or something like that, there was three million dollars deposited in your account? Would you continue to live like this, or would you continue? Uh, would you go into another level? You know, we see some of the ads on on TV about those people that win lotto. And uh, you know they're they're blind or something doing something because of the of the money their whole lifestyle changed. Well, friend, I want to tell you when you got born again, when you got filled with the Holy Spirit, God wants you to understand that the whole dynamics of your life has now changed, and there is something so powerful now that that's been deposited in your life that you can draw upon, and you can and it's there, Amen. You know, if you've got $3 million in your bank, you don't walk up to the bank with a check on. But if, 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 you, if you're living in poverty, and, and you, you go, and that's how you go, amen. Well, I hope I, I, hope, I hope I catch it, I hope it works, you know. I hope, I hope they don't look at what really what's there. You can't really go confused, they know exactly what's there. But when you know you've got $3 million in there, and you want to go and spend 1000 or 2000 or 100000 it's no problem to you because you know you can write the check because it's there. So what we've got to do is understand that when God, when we, you shall receive power, you receive God's power. You receive everything that God has made available. Everything that God represents is now in you by the Holy Spirit. Which means now that we can go with this new dynamics right to the very throne of God and we can say, God, this is what we want and God will hear us and God will give it to us. But what we, we get up there and we say things, but we don't believe them and we wonder why they don't happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix up some of the fundamental wrong thinking that's in our mind. Poverty mentality. That we can stand before God and say, God, you've given me everything that pertains to life and to godliness. You've given us everything, everything that we, ever, we will ever need, you've given us. So this power, you've received God's power. All the power that God has possessed has been deposited in you. In Ephesians 3.19, you might be saying, well, I'm here. that's not true. Listen to this, in Ephesians 3.19, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge or passes your thinking. God loves you so much that our thinking will sometimes stop what God really wants to do in our lives from getting through. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Is that what your Bible says? God wants to fill us with His fullness. So when we got filled with the Holy Spirit, we got filled with the fullness of God. Is that simple? Anybody having trouble with their mind? Think that not me. Perhaps all the Roberts. Perhaps Catherine Wilmer. Perhaps Mr. Finney. Perhaps somebody else. Perhaps this one. Perhaps that one. No, every one of us. I want to tell you the day is coming when, they will, when you will not have to have John Mallet come to get people's food. I'm not knocking, I love John Mallet, he's my friend. But what I'm saying is every one of you can be a John Mallet. Oh no, let me say, every one of you can be a Jesus. <laughs> no, I'm never going to do it like this and bring my own message. 
Don't limit it to what he can do. Limit it to what Jesus can do. Jesus healed all who are present there. He healed every one of them, not just a few, all of them. Some people that John comes to John's meeting will go, I'm sick. But not Jesus. And I believe that that's what God wants. He wants his body to, to rise up and be who God wants us to be. So you shall receive power. The power that God possesses has been deposited in you. We understand if we have $3 million deposited in us, but the power of God has been deposited in us. Power that's greater than the atom bomb is inside you. Can you imagine that? That's deposited in your spirit by the Holy Spirit who dwells within you. A power greater than the atomic bomb is on the inside of you. And yet some of us go off like penny crackers. <laughs> eh? But God wants us to be generous. Never say generous and powerful in the same sentence again. <laughs> Can you catch my drift here this morning? Yes. Anybody, is anybody yes. here? Yes. Give me a wave if you're here. If you're here. Generous power, the same power, more powerful than the atomic bomb, more powerful than anything that man could ever create. What an amazing thing that is. I believe it's the same with demonic forces. We can blast them out in Jesus' name. You know, before you got saved, I don't know about you, but I'd like just to have a quick look at where in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. And uh, it says here, uh, in chapter 2, rather, it says, And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of God, just as others. But God, everybody say, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which passes knowledge and understanding with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace, you have been saved. Hallelujah. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness to us with, uh, in Jesus Christ. But look. Over here in chapter 1, this is what it says. And what is the, this is verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. Far above principality and power. Friend, I want to tell you, you are right now far above principalities and powers and dominion and might. Why are you going and complaining that the devil has got you? I want to tell you, he cannot get you if you know where you are seated. But if you think you're still seated back here in your old life, the devil will have a field day on you. But when you realize that you've been translated into another kingdom, you're up above, far above, you look below. The devil cannot have any place in you. I want to tell you, the devil gets a lot of joy when he says the devil. When you hear, when he hears Christians say the devil's got me. I want to tell you, Jesus has got me. He's got me and he won't let me go. Put a fire in my valley, hallelujah. But a song in my heart is put a word in my mouth. Glory to God. How many people love Jesus in the house? Amen. Far above. Principality and power and might of dominion and every name that is named not only in this age, 
that all some that which is coming, and for all things that which speak, and gave him to be head over all things in the church with his body, the fullness of him that now fills all in all. Made you alive and set you free. Glory to God. That's who we are. God wants us to enter into his rest. Rest will never happen. It will never happen till we realize greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. You'll never enter into your rest while you're fighting the devil. You'll never enter into your rest while you are combating uh, and fighting all these things. But I want to tell you, you will not stop the attack, but you will always stop the results. You can never stop the attack, but you can stop the results. But I want to just share something that I believe that we need to see. It will never happen until we realize greater is he who is in me than he that is within the world. In 2 Kings 6.8, it's an amazing story that the king of Syria was out there to destroy the king of Israel. But there was a prophet, a man of God, a spirit-filled man of God in the town. And this spirit-filled man heard from God. And the, 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 the Syrian king would set up ambushes to try to destroy this king. But the, the man of God would hear, and he would send a message to the, to the king and say, don't go that way. But I want to tell you, it's time we, the church, learn to hear the voice of God and do what God tells us to do, and don't go up in some of the road and go down. Amen. Don't go that way. There's an ambush, and there's a trap. And the king, who was prisoner, he would send somebody to make sure, and the guy would come back and say, yes, they're waiting for you. There's a, there's a trap. This happened many times, but the king of Syria, he got so upset about this that he spoke to his men and all his prophets or whatever they were, all his, all his captains. And, and he said, who of you is against me? And the king knows exactly what we're doing. They said, none of us know. But there is a man of God in God. There's a man of God that knows the very things that you speak in your bed channel. He's the one that's telling the king not to go that way. And the Bible says that this king was so furious that he sent a whole troop, a whole army, horses and chariots. You get ready to be there for Surely he is a problem, that's a big So he sent a whole uh, army of, of, of uh, soldiers, chariots, and goodness knows what. And they surrounded the whole city. And it says there that when Gehazi woke in the morning, See, I'm, I'm the truth. <laughs> he looked out and he saw all these horses and all these chariots. And he went up to the man of God. Elisha and he said, Alas, my master, it's over. Told you you shouldn't be quiet. How many people have told you you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't say it, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't be quiet? How many people tell us this and tell us that? No, it's a time to talk. Amen. 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 Anyhow, here he is, and, and so now this man, as he's there, and as the power of God's gone through him, and goodness knows what else, and he's, and he's talking there. And Hans like walks up to him with his neighbor before him, says, Oh, he said, All right, it's, it's all over. It's finished. But this man had a peace. You know why he had a peace? Because he knew what God had deposited in his life. He knew that he was full of the fullness of God. He knew that, that, that there was the dynamics of having a spirit-filled life was all around him. When this man came, instead of going into panic mode, he just looked up and he said, Father, open his and I want every one of us to lift up our hands right now. And I want you to say this to our Father, uh, open my eyes. Let me see into the supernatural realm, the realm of the Spirit, 
what you made available, what's mine, what you've deposited into my life. Open my eyes that I might see. Amen. This man had such a confidence. He wasn't looking at the enemy. He was looking at the deposit in his bank. He wasn't looking at the cost. He was looking at what he had. Open his eyes, Lord. And all of a sudden, this young man opened his eyes. And around the man of God were horses and chariots of fire. There's more for us than the animals. Friend, today I want to say this to you. There's more for you than can be of you. There is more going on for you today than you could ever imagine. God is pouring out a script. How many people can see what I'm talking about? The dynamics of living a spirit filled mind. A spirit filled mind. Father, as we enter in, we want to leave behind the stuff that is the weights and things that get around our eyes in 2016. We thank you for all that was done in 2000. We thank you, my Lord. Lives have been touched, lives have been changed, and, and, and just taking us to that to another level with you, my God. But I believe, my God, that this is our hour. This is the hour. I'm going to say it for global connections to rise. It's the hour for us to be seen. It's the hour for us to take on and, and allow that anointing to flow out of us. It's time for us to go out and speak the word with boldness and authority. It's time to have our eyes open that we can see that around about us are horses and chariots of fire. Hallelujah. And Father, we will give you all the praise and we will give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. On your heads and bowed your eyes and closed. I just want you to say in your own heart today. And if you're here, we're not going to have an altar. But I want you in your own heart, if you're here right now, and you want to say, Lord, there's some things, might be anger, might be bitterness, might be somebody there that I found hard to forgive, might be somebody there that I've held a grudge against. I don't know, it might be something there that's happened. That, that, that has affected me. And I can think of things in my life. I know you think I'm so pure. But there's things in my life that I need to leave behind in 2016 and approach 2017 with a clean slate. So, God, right now, if you're one of them, just lift up your hands. So, your eyes are closed. Just lift up your hands. And say, Lord, I want to leave those things behind. Will you strengthen me? Will you help me? Will you be my strength in Jesus' name? Everybody say. Amen.